Hey y'all, I'm Kayla. Nice to meet you. If you're like me, you're in transition right now. What do I mean by that? I mean, for the better part of two months, God has been making it clear to me that I am leaving one circumstance, one status, one way of being, and moving into another. Not just another, but a place that is promise, a place that is accomplishment of purpose, a place that is for perpetual holding, which is what a promised land is. I'm en route. I'm en route. And if you're like me, so are you. I, with my church, have been doing a corporate fast for 21 days. We've just recently concluded that fast. Throughout that fast, the Lord had me studying Moses. He had me studying the Israelites coming out of Egypt. And in this last week, because we've been done with the fast for about a week, he's then been going and showing, he's been filling in a lot of blanks for me around the behavior of the Israelites when they were in their transition in the wilderness, some of the miracles of provision that he did. How do you use this? Someone will tell me. Somebody is going to say that's wrong what you're doing there. Um, this is likely wrong what I'm doing here. So there were different stages of their transition. Um, in the beginning, they're first getting into, into the wilderness, right? And the first thing that, we're, that we see is that they're complaining that they're no longer in captivity. That sounds crazy. Why would they complain about being free? Well, they had a difficult time with their perception. Their understanding of what freedom was, was skewed. We see we're in Exodus 16, cha yeah, Exodus chapter 16, um, verse 3. It says, the Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat. We ate all the food we wanted, but you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Okay, so... They were slaves in Egypt. There was nothing free or abundant about that life. They were slaves. Here they are in the wilderness and they've been given a guarantee by the Lord through his servants, Moses and Aaron, that they are walking into a place of perpetual holding, a place that was promised to them years and years ago, a place that is theirs for keeps, a place where what they plant will grow and be abundant, all these different things about a promised land. And they're thinking about the place where they were a slave, where there was absolutely no freedom, no respect, no value put on their contributions to keeping Egypt running, no reverence of anything. And they're longing for it because their perception is that they had plenty to eat. And here in this place of transition, we don't see it. And so we perceive that as scarcity. We perceive that as lack. They had a, there was something happening in their mindset that had to be healed. That makes sense because we see where Paul says in Philippians chapter four, verse 12, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. You have to learn how to live in plenty. You have to learn how to live in abundance. Um, it's not is it's not something you may show up knowing when you're in transition in route to your place of plenty. That is something that has to get healed in you. Is your mindset, your perception of how to live in abundance, how to live in plenty? Because they thought slavery was plenty because they were focused on the the provision, the resource, and really even in wilderness there was more. It was more plentiful than what they had in Egypt because they were free. There's a shifting in their mind that had to happen. There's a shifting in their perception that had to get healed. So God understanding and being gracious about the fact that their mindset was not where it needed to be, that they were not yet in a mindset where they understood how to accept abundance and freedom as it truly was. He was gracious and he said, I will do a miracle. So he told, he gave instruction through Moses, let the people know you'll have meat and, and bread. Okay. And tomorrow you should expect to see it. You'll see meat, you'll see bread. Okay. So back in Exodus chapter 16, it, this is verse six. So Moses and Aaron said to 
all the Israelites in the evening, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Again, God was gracious to the fact that their mindset was not where it needed to be. And because their mindset wasn't healed, they were confessing things that were in contradiction to where he actually had them. Slavery is not better than being in a moment of transition and on your way to a promised land. Slavery is not better than that. But that's what they were confessing because their mind needed to be healed. And he was gracious about that. So he said, the Lord heard your grumbling um, against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it is the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. So we skip down. Moses lets them know what the Lord said. And sure enough, that evening, it says that evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. Okay, so how did God deal with their unhealed mindset? He blessed them, gave them a miracle and allowed it to be something that they could see and feel and touch and taste. He, he did a sign for them because what was really lacking, the reason that they were grumbling, the reason they, that they thought slavery was better than even this slightly uncomfortable, unusual moment of transition that was never supposed to last a long time. The reason that they thought slavery was better than the transition is because they did not trust God. Okay. So he did a miracle to prove to them, you can trust me. I'm not going to let you die here. I'll feed you. I know you need food. I know you're confused about where you are. I know your mind needs to be healed. I'll do a sign and I'll prove to you that you can trust me. I'm not going to let you starve. I'm not going to, as you said, let you die in the desert. Okay. He gave them meat and he gave them bread, which we know is manna. Um, They were told to go out each day to get what you need. And again, the Lord understood that they had a mindset that needed to be healed. So he he was watching to see how people behaved when they gathered their manna and quit or their manna every day, right? So some people, it says some people got a little and some people got a lot. But by the time they got it back to their camp, even those who had who gathered a lot didn't have too much and even those who gathered a little didn't have too little right so you had exactly what you needed is what it says please go back and read this, this is exodus chapter 16 so he understood some people are in such su- so entrenched in that mindset of scarcity they're gonna get more than actually what they need. And some people are so insecure and feel so undeserving all the time and have a difficult time receiving. They're only going to get a little because they don't want to be in the way. But regardless, I'm going to make sure you have what you need because right now what I need to be established in you is that you can trust me, that I understand where you are and I'm not going to let you starve and I'm going to make sure you have exactly what you need while you're transitioning. They were given instruction that you cannot save the manna. Okay, so this has been a this has been a point that's been blessing me in my life recently. You can't save the manna. Okay, right? So it says, this is verse 19 of the same chapter 16. It says, Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until the morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses, right? Because they got a scarcity mindset and they think we gotta hold on to what we have because we don't we don't trust that there will be more of this. So we gotta hold on to what we have. So it says in verse 20, however, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. Okay. So Moses was angry with them because he he already told y'all, you can't save it. Don't save it. Right. You're, you're just going to get what you need every day. Don't save it. Verse 21, each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed. And when the sun grew hot, it melted away. So what is this teaching me at this stage in my life? The provision that God gives you while you are in transition and on your way to promised land, you may not keep that, okay? Because I'll look at certain things in my life, certain opportunities, certain moments that I'm in, and I'm like, why couldn't I stay in that? Or why couldn't I keep that? Or why did that fall away? Because it's manna and you can't keep manna. Manna is not built to stay. It's not built to last. It will always disintegrate. It'll always be eaten up because it was just provision 
for you to get through while you're on your way to promise. It is not something that you need to lament when it goes away. It's not something you need to try to hold on to because you don't trust that the Lord will provide and give you more. It is just provision to help you get through your transition on your way to promise. I hope that blesses somebody because it's been blessing me. I'm looking at certain things in my life that right now, because I am in transition and on my way to promise, I'm looking at certain things in my life that I thought that that was, uh, I thought that those were things that were meant to last, but they're not lasting. And that's why, because they can't, because they're manna and you can't keep manna and that's all right. This is another thing that's been blessing me. We know that this particular generation did not see the promised land and that they unfortunately ended up in the wilderness for for 40 years, right? But even throughout all of that time, God did not stop providing manna, right? So if you are in a similar place where you're like, I thought X, Y, and Z was going to last. I thought this opportunity was going to last. I thought I could sit in this particular provision and you see it disintegrating on you feel like you've lost it just know what will happen for sure is either God will give you more of it because you need it and he is a good God and he'll provide and he wants you to know you can trust him and he's not gonna let you starve in the desert or you won't need it because you're about to step into a promised land where all the things that you eat have a name. Manna was literally, they didn't know what to call it. They just said, what is it? It was just like wafer. It tasted like honey, but it wasn't honey. Whereas your the promised land that the next generation ended up seeing actually had honey flowing, right? This just tasted like honey. It was just like honey. It was like bread, right? Like a wafer, as it said. Either God will give you more because you need it, or you're stepping into a promised land where there's real honey, where there's real bread. Because what's the first thing they did when they when they got into the promised land? They sat down and they had a Passover meal and it names all of these delicious choice foods that they now had access to. It says they were eating the produce of the land, okay? And it named it. It was bread. It was like actual bread. <laughs> Not something like bread, actual bread, right? So, Just be encouraged that if you are looking at all these things in your life that were only ever meant to be provision and you're like, why couldn't I keep that? It's because it's manna. And if you need more, God will give you more. Or you can trust and rest in the fact and rejoice in the fact that maybe you're stepping into a promised land where you're going to eat food that has a real name. This is the other thing that's been such a blessing to me, especially this week. One of the instructions that God gave them through Moses was, so each day you're going to go out and get what you need. But on that sixth day, go ahead and get twice as much as what you what you need. Get twice as much as you normally would. Why? Because on this seventh day, I want you to take a Sabbath. I want you to rest. Okay. Again, we got these folks. The Lord, the Lord understands the mind is what needs to be healed. So we got these folks who are so in a scarcity mindset. It does not matter if the living God who just split a sea brought them out of hundreds of years of slavery. It don't matter if he is the one telling you to rest. They are so in that works mindset. I got to grind. I got to get it. If I don't go get it, I won't have it. Life ain't fair. You got to fight for your cut. They're so in that mindset that they still went out on a day of, of rest, a day that they were instructed to rest and try to gather. And you know what they found? Nothing. There was nothing there because God already told you there wasn't going to be anything there. Okay. He told you, get what you get twice as much as you need on day six, because on day seven, and by the way, this is important because we, we, we just discussed that you can't keep manna, but God understood he intended for them to rest. So they were allowed to save manna on day or on the evening of day six, right into day seven. He didn't let maggots eat it up. He didn't let it melt away like it did on the other days. He didn't let it spoil he, he wanted them to take that time on day seven to rest. So he made sure that the provision he gave them lasted so that they could have it and use it 
and actually rest on day seven. It was important that they rest, right? It was important that they get their rest. Why was it important that they get their rest? Well, let's go to Hebrews. So in Hebrews chapter four, um, reading a little bit of verse seven into verse eight, it says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. There will be a time like there was when he's referencing Joshua in in Hebrews 8. There's a time where you're going to have to push through so you can go ahead and cross over into promise. There's not going to be time for rest then, right? So there is a necessity to take the rest that is being offered to you now. You've got to take that rest. It's instructed that you take the rest. And the thing that's been, been blessing me is God will make sure that he has provided for you that you don't have to labor when you ought to be resting. And it wasn't even a lot of labor they were going to have to do. It's not like they were instructed to go into this part of the wilderness and forage for resources. God provided the resources. All they had to do was go and pick it up and gather it. That was like easy labor, really. Even that amount of labor that you, you, you're like, oh, I can get that done. Don't get that done. God has given you enough provision that you will have what you need while you rest. And you need to rest because energy will be needed for that push once you get to that place where it's time to cross over. I hope that that is sound and I hope that that blesses you because it's been blessing me. Receive rest, receive rest, okay? It's all right to rest. And especially it's, it's all right to rest if he is instructing you to do so is definitely all right to rest in that situation. That's pretty much what I got. I hope it blesses y'all. I'm in transition and I've been in many moments of transition in my life, obviously, and they've all been different. But this one is particularly interesting because even though I've been in moments of transition where circumstances were a lot easier than, than what I could say that they are right now, I have never, ever, ever been in a moment of transition that felt this peaceful and sewed up. Like, I just know this moment is sewed up. I don't, I, I hope you, I don't, do y'all know what that means? Like, I feel like, not even I feel like I know, I am assured that this moment is appointed that this moment is arranged by God, that there is nothing worthy of me even thinking I need to worry about, like not a thing. Because this moment, this timing, this positioning, this journey into promise is so arranged and so appointed. And I just have so much peace about it. And so I hope If you're in a moment of transition, that that will encourage you to do some resting yourself and to be assured in God and to trust that he has you exactly where he wants you to be. He is trying to heal in you right now. That mindset where we have a tendency to lament and long for what was actually either captivity or it was just provision and it was never the the big grand thing. Maybe he's trying to heal that mindset in you. And so... I encourage you to pray today to ask the Lord to search your heart. If you're if if any of this resonates with you, I encourage you to just ask him to help you perceive where you are. Perceive the moment because he is doing a new thing and I perceive it. I encourage you to ask him to help you perceive it as well. Heal your perception, heal your mind. And if you're in a similar place to me and you're feeling similar things to me where you're just like in such expectancy and excitement and you're receiving the rest, I'm happy for you. It's a really great place. (laughs) I don't know how else to put that. It's just a really great place and I'm excited. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in my life specifically but I'm excited for what he's doing in the lives of all of y'all because I'm seeing it everywhere. I'm just seeing it everywhere. 
you all have watched the sun go down with me, and that's why there's more shadows in the back, but let's pray. So Lord, we thank you so much for this time to be able to learn together, to encourage one another. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to use any gifts that you have given me prophetically or in terms of teaching and encouragement to encourage my brothers and sisters, Lord. I just pray that every single person that you would um, lead to listen to this video, Lord, that they are encouraged, that they hear your voice through it, that they hear your instruction through it, Lord. I pray that you would continue to heal our minds, to prime our hearts, God, to be able to perceive where we are. Um, I pray, Lord, you would heal hearts, that you would heal our souls, that you would heal our thinking, that you would heal our imagination, Lord, that you would show us how to live in plenty, that you would show us how to trust you in transition, that you would show us how to rest in you in this moment that you have us in, Lord. Show us how to let go of those things that you never intended to stay with us, Lord, whether it was a circumstance, whether it was a, a job, whether it was a certain connection that was only meant to be provision or was only meant to be refinement, Lord, but it was never meant to stay with us, Lord. We were never meant to stay in it. Help us, Lord, to let go of those things that you have not designed to stay with us, Lord. Help us to not lament the things that are just not even worth our remembrance of them except to give a testimony of how you provided or a testimony of how you kept us or a testimony of what you taught us Lord outside of that not worth remembering Lord when we think on the things that you're doing right now and the things that you're bringing us into Lord heal our imagination renew hope God renew energy physical energy renew our mental stamina and endurance God that we can continue to be present in this moment moment of transition, Lord. We will continue to lean into you, Lord, um, to rely on you, God, for our, to be our provider, to be a supplier of every need, God, to strengthen us, Lord, while we are on our way to promise. So we just pray these things in Jesus' name. We thank you for these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all.